All right, so if you've been trying to hit the ball higher into the air, I bet you you've had some mixed results. And I bet you've been working on maybe staying a little more behind the golf ball, feeling like you help it up in the air slightly. And what that does is it causes you to hit behind it and to chunk the golf ball. So you do hit some higher ones when you happen to hit it solid. Maybe you got a nice fluffy lie and you can hit up on it. But then you get a little bit of a tighter lie, you chunk it. And because the low point is behind the golf ball, you're swinging up into it and you thin it. So you alternate between okay shots, big chunks, big thins, and it's just all kinds of frustration. Well, speed, in particular, a couple of techniques that I'm gonna show you in this video that lead to more club head speed is more important than trying to get the ball up in the air through technique. And let me show you a little demonstration of what this looks like. So I have a six iron here. I'm gonna make a normal swing. I'm gonna swing a little bit slower here. Maybe hit this 140 or 50 yards. And let's go ahead and try it out. There we go, dead solid. Slightly right of the target, 144 yards, six iron, carry. Rolled out to 162, so it'd be like landing on the green and rolling out a little bit. My launch angle there was 15.4. Now what that means is, if I hit this golf ball with my club, it's gonna take off into the air and launch vertically like this. So if this is flat with the ground, I hit the golf ball, and the golf ball leaves at an angle that shoots it up in the air. So this would be, a thir or in this case, a 15.4 degree launch angle. So if it was zero degrees launch angle, it'd just be scooting across the blades of the grass level with the ground. And as we get higher and higher launch angle, that's gonna launch the ball more vertically into the air. So there, 15.4 degrees, 144 yards carry. I swung 75 miles an hour, so kind of a, a three quarter swing. And if I come over here on the computer and I pull up the full data, I can see that the max height of that shot was 54.5 feet. Now tour average is about 100 feet for max height, but the tour average launch angle is pretty close to that 15.4 degrees. So how do tour players hit it twice as high with the ball leaving at the same angle? The only difference is a little bit more club head speed. So now let me use a little bit better technique here. I'm gonna hit the ball with a little more speed Hopefully I can get it to launch at roughly the same angle. And we're gonna see the height difference here. Let's go ahead and try it out. So make more of a full swing on this one. Let's see how high it goes. There we go, hit that one hard. So almost the exact same launch angle, 16.1 degrees. That's roughly the same. So one minute on a clock or one little tick of a minute on a clock face is six degrees. We went from 15.4 to 16.1, that's half a degree. Uh, that's, that's one twelfth of a minute on a clock face. So we're talking really fractional difference there. My carry distance went up to 204. My swing speed was 100 versus 75. So that's the main difference. I swung 20 miles an hour faster. My club head moved 20 miles an hour faster, 25 miles an hour faster through contact. And even though we had virtually the same launch angle, when I come over here and I look at my maximum height, now all of a sudden the maximum height was higher than tour average, 117.9 feet. That's because I swung a little faster than average tour player on that particular shot. And I over doubled the maximum height. So you can even see it in the tracers here. The one tracer is half the height of the second tracer and that's all to do with speed. The ball left at the same angle. Everything else was basically the same. The only difference was my club head was moving faster through the ball. So if you're doing all these techniques trying to help the ball up in the air, what you really need to be working on is being able to swing faster. And there's two things that I see that anyone can do to improve their speed quite a few miles an hour fairly quickly. Now, number one is to get what I call an early turn. So if I don't turn my shoulders, again, let me go ahead and swing one where I don't rotate my shoulders at all. This is different than a, a big or a long swing. So here, I'm not gonna rotate my shoulders at all. I'm not gonna turn my shoulders, so I'm only moving to here, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my arms and club almost up to a full backswing. So this is no shoulder turn, almost full backswing, or what feels like a full backswing. So I really tried to feel like I lashed at that one. Yeah, it went a little farther because I can hit it fairly hard. I got a, lot, a fairly good amount of strength, but my speed was only 83 miles an hour, only a few miles an hour faster than when I made the little half swing. So yes, it went a little higher than the first one. That's mostly just because I muscled it through and was able to generate quite a bit of club head speed, even with really bad technique. So I'm losing almost, even there, I'm losing almost 20 miles an hour of club head speed using bad technique. 
Now in the second version, I'm still gonna get the club just short of parallel. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my shoulders early. What I mean by this is I'm gonna feel like I do very little wrist set, and I'm gonna feel like when my hands are almost just past waist high, almost like low chest high, I'm gonna feel like my shoulders have already turned 90 degrees. And when I do that, I load up early. It allows me to take a fairly short backswing and still get a lot of speed because I've loaded my body. So if you feel tight, a lot of times that's because you get to the top of the swing, you haven't turned yet, and you feel like you can't go anymore. I wanna turn really early, get my shoulders moving here by the time my hands are chest high, and I've made this big, huge turn with my body. I've even let my feet and my knees pivot a little bit to allow my hips and my shoulders to turn, but I have a short backswing. So if you're worried about your swing going too long, you gotta turn the body earlier to keep a short swing and still have power. So I'm gonna feel like I get that early turn, big shoulder turn, big body turn early, Hands are only gonna go about shoulder height in the backswing and watch what my speed does. There we go. Killed that one, 206. Again, 15.7 degrees launch. Look at the height on that one. 101 club head speed and probably about 114 feet total there. So that's a big piece of it. That's drill number one. We gotta get that early body turn. I feel like when your hands are chest high, your shoulders and your hips have already rotated a ton. That allows you to rotate your body and get the power into it without having this big long swing. So it's a short and powerful swing. Piece number two is what I call the power position. You've probably heard me mention this before, but as my club is parallel with the ground in the downswing, I want it to be parallel with the ground, like I said. I want it to be a little bit to the inside. So I want to be shallowing out, coming to the inside. So if you imagine this is my target line, this would be to the inside, this would be the outside. I want to feel like my club head is a little to the inside and I'm gonna feel like I'm low to the ground, lots of lag, and then I'm releasing it at the last second. You almost feel like your hands are almost by your knee here when you're in this power position, and then you let it go. That's gonna get that lag and get that club to whip on through there to get a lot of club head speed, even if you're not that big and that strong. So big body turn, power position from there with lots of lag late. Let's go ahead and give this thing a big rip. Let's see if we can get a little farther than 206 with this one. There we go, 214 with that one. Again, launched at 15.2. It launched the same height, the same angle as that one that only went 50 or 40 something feet in the air. Again, those are all three going 112, 114 feet in the air, really, really good. I'm not seeing the data right now on any, but they're way up there, even though the ball left at the same angle. That's all due to speed. So that's what you need to be working on if you're going to hit the ball with height and hit it solid. If you try to lift the ball in the air, it's gonna be drop kicks, chunks, thin shots, all those kind of things. Now, what if you feel like you're really rushing your downswing? So a lot of times I'll hear players say, okay, I get to the top of my backswing, I'm rushing it so much that I feel like I don't have anything left. I feel like there's no way I could keep this lag late in my swing, where I feel like that I just have no control of the club. Well, a lot of that has to do with a move that you're making the very first start of the downswing. And once you learn the right way to do it, you're gonna be able to shallow out the club have lots of lag and have a lot more power and hit the ball higher too. So I wanna share with you the exact way to do this. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in a second. Just click one of the cards that you see it pops up on the screen. If you don't see one of those cards, don't worry. Just go down to the link below in the description and you'll get instant access to it there also. So best of luck. Let me show you the way to smooth out that transition so that all this stuff in the downswing feels a lot easier. You see, if you feel smooth and you feel like you have control of this club head, everything that we talked about, getting this big body turn, and I'm smooth, and then all of a sudden the club just takes off through contact. It's got a lot of whip. It's got a lot of pop through the impact zone. That's what you wanna have, because that allows you to be consistent and powerful at the same time. So it's the perfect thing to pair with what we just talked about here today. So best of luck. I'm gonna play a preview of that video. Let's go and get started right now. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often, or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. 
First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this. And once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do.